Hazel Yvonne Clark Charles of Jones Gap Bridge Road, St. Michael, entered peacefully into rest at age 63. Wife of the late Augustine Charles, daughter of the late Elaine and Nathaniel Clark, mother of Peterson, Carol Ann and Anderson Clark, grandmother of Kareem and Rashida Alkins, Haley Bradshaw and Nova Riley Clark, and the late Rico Alkins, sister of Leston Griffith, Velma Butcher, Patsy, Patrick and Nigel Clark, and the late Bertram Griffith, aunt of Valencia Johnson, Shelley Ann Clark, Xavier Ashby, Alcindor, Susan and Chantel Clark, Lizanne, Raquel and Najee Griffith, great aunt of many, cousin of Jacqueline Briggs and many others, relative of the Clark, Griffith and Briggs families, friend of Harold Mason, Beverly Foster and many others. The funeral of the late Hazel Yvonne Clark Charles leaves Earl's funeral home on Tuesday, March 5, 2024, for the Chapel of Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens, the Ridge Christ Church, where relatives and friends are asked to meet for the service of Thanksgiving at 2 p.m. The funeral will then proceed to the Frangipani Lawns Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens for the interment. Live streaming of the funeral may be viewed via watch.earlsfuneralhome.com forward slash Hazel Charles. Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Where God just took the only one I know So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day When I see your face again But until then God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside 
now we'll hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah
no matter what you're going through, I know that you can stand. For your life is in, in his hand. Please stand.
Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This evening we are gathered here to share in a service of thanksgiving for the life of Hazel Yvonne Clark Charles. We believe that her life hid in Christ with God is one of commitment and ask you as you share in this very special moment that you understand that the family also needs your prayers. Here to open our prayer for us is the Reverend Cavour Blackman. Can we please stand? Let's bow our heads. Father, we give you honor and praise and worship this evening because you are God and Lord of all. You are God of the living and of the dead. And this evening, as we come this evening to celebrate the life of Hazel, we want to welcome your presence here and pray that you'll comfort all the family members, children. We pray that you will be their comfort and their strength in this hour. Pray that you would wrap your arms around them and be there for them. We pray, Father God, that memories and the good things that she did and the expressions would remain in their hearts favorably to encourage them at such a time. I pray best of all that they will have a sense of seeing her again, a sense that this is only a transition, but that they'll see her again. Father, we pray these things this evening in the name of Jesus and prayer that your presence will be here and you'll guide this service and you'll bless this family and this service in Jesus name. Please be seated. We're going to have songs of praise and worship to God be the glory. The worship team is going to come and lead us in this very special song immediately after the song is finished. We're going to ask Lizanne Griffith to come and read from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 7.
Good afternoon. Today's scriptures reading is from Revelations 21, verses 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with, with them, and they, shall be with, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be no more there, there be any more pain, for former things are passed away. And he that sitteth, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son, and he shall be my son. Thank you, Lizanne, for the word. Can anybody in here say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can anybody in here say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. The song was just sung. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. And I saw some people there. We need to give God praise. The mere fact that you are here this evening and able to inhale, exhale, look around, talk to somebody, is a blessing. You have a right to praise the Lord. The word of God says that those who have breath should do what? And anybody in here breathing? Yes. yes, so we need to praise the Lord. Can we have another praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. That's, that sounds like there are some people in here who are alive and well. We have another song, a congregation song, a beautiful song. For me, it's an anthem. And can it be? And we have the team coming back to lead us in that song. And immediately after that song, we're going to have Jackie Breaks to come and to read the lesson taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, 
verse 1 to 6. Can you stand for this hymn, please? Let's open up our lungs and give God some praise. Amen. Good evening, church. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. 
My father's house has many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am. There you may be also. And where I go, you know, the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, and you may be seated. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused the quickening ray. I clothed, I, I woke the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Freedom that comes only through Jesus Christ. To know him and to make him the Lord of your life is the ultimate gift that you can offer this evening, to let him be the Lord of your life. We have a special song now. We're done by Adrian Clark. Yes, sir, come. Thank you. Immediately following Adrian, we have the eulogy done by Leston Griffith. Good afternoon, everyone. I to offer my condolences to the family. And I do this song specially. Um, Caroline, I know you wanted a nice song, but um, I hope this fit the bill. When I am alone, I sit and dream, and when I dream, the words are missing. Yes, I know that in a room so full of light, that light is missing. But I don't see you with me, with me. Close up the windows. Bring the sun to the room through the door you've opened, close in sight of me the light you see that you met in the darkness. Time to say goodbye. Horizons Oh, never far would I have to find them alone Without true light of my own with you I will go On ships overseas that I now know No, they don't exist anymore it's time to say goodbye. When you were so far away, I sit alone and dreamt of the horizon. Then I know that you are here with me, with me, building bridges over land and sea. Shine a blinding light for you and me to see, for us to be. Time to say goodbye. Horizons are never far. Would I have to find them alone without true light of my own with you? 
I will go on ships over sea that I now know. No, they don't exist anymore without true light of my own with you. I will go horizons are never far would I have to find them alone without true light of my own with you I will go on ships overseas that I now know no, they don't exist anymore. It's time to say goodbye, time to say goodbye. Horizons are never far. Would I have to find them alone? Without true light of my own with you, I will go on ships overseas that I now know. No, they don't exist anymore. Without true light of my own with you, I will go Horizons are never far Would I have to face it alone Without true light of my own with you I will go on ships overseas that I now know. No, they don't exist anymore without you light of my own. Thank you. She rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As we gather here today, we find ourselves in the midst of an ocean of emotions. It is not easy to say Goodbye. My sister's departure has left an irreplaceable void, yet her spirit, her laughter, and her memory continue to be with us. Hazel Yvonne Charles Nee Clark was born to Nathaniel and Elaine Clark. She was the third of six siblings and dad's favorite. In our home, when we were growing up, church was a must, and my sister attended either the Church of God, or the New Testament Church of God in Britain. Mom was a master cook. Therefore, it was no surprise that Hazel followed in her footsteps. And later, 
Her, her culinary skills became her profession in her adult years. My sister received her formal education at Ebenezer Primary School. And the Princess Margaret Secondary School. Upon leaving school, she gained employment at Caribbean Electronics. And after that, her passion for cooking enabled her to open her own establishment, his place. My sister was a dresser and liked to look good. She had a sense of humor and could cook sweet, sweet food. Those of us who had the privilege of tasting her cuckoo and flying fish could attest to this. Hazel was the glue that kept our family together and in touch with one another, always reaching out and even played the role of a mother figure to many of her nieces and cousins. When Rico, her grandside, grandson, died, Hazel was greatly heartbroken. To most of us, my sister's death was sudden. And during her brief illness, Caroline, you were an exceptional daughter. Your unconditional love, commitment, and dedication to your mom in her final days is commendable and stands out like a beacon. Thank you, niece. To family and friends, we can take comfort in the fact that Hazel accepted Jesus as her eternal savior long before her passing, a personal decision that she was very excited about. To her dear children, Peterson, Caroline, Anderson, her five grandchildren, family and friends, grief comes in waves, ebbing and flowing. There will be calm times. There will be overwhelming times. All we can do <laughs> is learn to lean on the Lord, trusting in God to help us through these difficult periods. For only those of us capable of deep love could also suffer great sorrow. As we bid farewell to my dear sister, I am confident that her legacy would live on in the lives of the people she touched. Thank you for joining us today. And let us never forget the love we have for Hazel. Until we meet again, sis, rest in the everlasting arms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and rise in glory. Thank you. Good evening, our, our felt condolences to family. to lesson to all her siblings and 
to all her family members, her children, our condolences this evening to you. I asked the Lord for something to share on this occasion, and I trust that what I have to share will be an inspiration, especially to the family members, because even though I sense there's a kind of a quiet in this place of mourning, I know there are those who are hurting deeply. For certainly we do not come to the house of mourning with celebratory clothing and with timbrels and music and stuff. We come to the house of mourning because someone dear to us has passed away and gone into eternity and we miss them. We miss them dearly. So I, even though you're quiet this evening, I know that with the quietness, you are experiencing deep loss. I want to take your attention to the Gospel of St. John and to uh, chapter 11. And there we see Jesus and his account with the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And uh, I want to share from this, this um, passage because there are three simple points I want to bring to your attention. Funerals remind us of our own mortality, the fact that we too will die at some point. Then they remind us as concerning the contribution we are making and whose lives we are impacting. In other words... Are we fulfilling our purpose? Are we leaving a legacy? Or what kind of legacy are we leaving? And thirdly, funerals remind us that there will be a resurrection and a judgment. In chapter 11 of St. John, much is said about uh, Jesus' friendship with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And I believe that the message that comes over, I believe that message that God wants us to get, the Holy Spirit wants us to get, is that the resurrection is a reality. The resurrection is a reality. And Jesus wanted, as he interacted with Mary, Martha, he wanted them to understand that even though death occurred in their family, that death is not the end. But a time will come when those who are dead shall hear the voice of Christ and they shall arise from the grave. So, I want to, to say to us this evening that it's, it's important to have a relationship with Jesus. Because we see this with Mary, Martha, and they had a relationship with Jesus, a social, a spiritual, a dynamic relationship with Jesus where he was able to go into their home and fellowship with them, teach them, they understood him to be a healer. They understood him to be a, a deliverer. They understood him to be a mighty man of God. And it's, it's so important this evening for us to have a relationship with Jesus. You know, and when I say Jesus, I mean the Son of God. I mean the one who created the world. I mean the one who created the heavens and the earth. Because the Bible says in Psalm 24 and verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So I want us to understand that when I talk about Jesus, I'm speaking about the one who was there from the beginning, the one who created all things, the one from whom we came and from whom we'll go back to. We are his possessions. Hazel is his possession. Amen. We belong to Jesus. 
We, let's get it right. We belong to Jesus. You see, people might live this, their, their lives and somebody might say, but I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. It's not so. You belong to the Lord. Amen. And it's so important for us to have a relationship with Jesus. That's important. That's, that's very important. And in spite of what may be said about Mary, Martha, or Lazarus for that matter, the critical, the critical thing about it is that they had a relationship with Jesus. Secondly, I want us to appreciate the fact that how we live and what we do in this life is important. How we live and what we do in this life is important. Because when we leave this life, we either leave pleasant memories or unpleasant memories. We either impact people positively or we impact people negatively. We either bring people closer to their purpose and to God and to each other or we drive them away. I want to challenge myself, I want to challenge us all this evening as to how we live our lives. When Lazarus died, it seemed as though Lazarus was a very positive and powerful man in his community. The Bible says that many of the Jews came out to mourn with Martha and Mary over Lazarus' passing. And uh, it seems as though Lazarus, much is not said about him, but it seems as though Lazarus was well known, did good things. So much so that when he died, uh, uh, two things happened. One, the disciples wanted to die with him. Read it yourself. Read it in John chapter. J Judas said, Master, if, if, uh, if Lazarus is dead, let us go and die with him. In other words, this man was so important, significant, that the disciples themselves wanted to die with him. He was so valuable. His contribution was, was so meaningful that they didn't want him to go. As a matter of fact, if you look at the, the passage carefully, you will see that Jesus delayed his going to Bethany because he didn't want Lazarus to go yet. He wanted to raise him from the dead. He wanted to bring him back to life because of his contribution. This, this, this afternoon, let us, let us look at the contributions we are making and let us make sure that the con contribution we are making is going to last. Some people get the privilege of building houses having streets named after them, and other significant things. But I want to suggest to us this evening that one of the greatest contributions we can make is in the lives of our children, in the lives of our family. Let us so raise our children. Let us so interact with our family that they stay in our hearts for eternity. Do I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Thirdly, the whole story about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus is about the resurrection. It's about the resurrection. You know, I remember saying something to someone a couple of years ago, and the, 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 the question was, so how is this going to happen? How is this possible? You know, when we hear about things like the resurrection and heaven and judgment, sometimes there's skepticism. We want, how is this going to happen? How is this possible? And Mary and Martha were skeptical too. Because for them, up to this point, Jesus did not uh, introduce himself to them as the resurrection. But coming up to the, the point where he had come to Bethany and, and he, he wanted to go where Lazarus was buried, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. When you look at me, 
you see the one who has power over death. When you look at me, you see the one who is going to say, rise from the dead. When you look at me, you're going to, you see the one who has power to do all things. So he, he introduces himself to them at that moment as the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. When you look at when you see me, you see the one who is going to cause all men to come from the grave on that day. So what Jesus is really getting over in this passage is the fact that he's the resurrection. He's the resurrection. As a matter of fact, can, can you understand? We've got to understand that Jesus is the one who said, let there be light, and there was light. He's the one who said, let us make man in our image. The Father said to him, let's make man in, the, in our image. And I want to declare this evening that there's nothing impossible with him. When he says, I am the resurrection, he demonstrated it by raising Lazarus from the dead. Hallelujah. And anything that, anything that God wants to do, he can do. Anything that is, loses its life, he can bring it back to, to life again. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. So he wanted to impress upon Mary and Martha. He wanted to impress upon them his power. And this evening, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you for just a moment. Because sometimes we, we see Jesus in limited terms. We see Jesus um, on Good Friday or on Christmas Day. We celebrate a Jesus who's a baby. Or we celebrate a Jesus who's, who's um, crucified. And our perception and understanding of Jesus is limited. But I want you to understand, I want to appreciate with me, as I'm trying to appreciate it myself, that Jesus has all power. And he says, don't limit me. Don't limit me in your life. Don't limit me in your circumstances. Don't limit me in your family situations. Because let's, let's understand that his presence in, with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus was a major plus for that family. They want to say to us this, this afternoon, let's not limit Jesus. Let's not limit his, his power to change things in our lives. Because he can do it. He says to them, I am the resurrection and I am the life. But after the resurrection, there's a judgment. And, and when the judgment, when time comes for judgment, we'll all be judged according to the deeds we did in our bodies, the things that we did in this life. And the question is, when we stand before the Lord, will we be cast away as those who did not own Jesus as Lord and Savior? Or will we here enter into the joys of the Lord? You know, the choice is ours. Because God has given to every one of us the power of choice. The power to decide where we'll spend eternity. When we're resurrected, where we'll go. But as sure as we are alive this afternoon, all the graves of Coral Ridge are going to give up their dead. And, and, and don't, don't ask me how it's going to happen with people who died 100 years ago. The dust will come together. Glory be to God. The bones will come together. Because you know who's speaking is Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. There's life in Jesus. Amen. I said there's life in Jesus. There's life in Jesus. And he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. So when we stand in the judgment this afternoon, how will we stand before God? Will we be found guilty, not living the way we should, dying in our sins? Or will we be found in a place where we spend eternity with him? The choice is yours. Because, you know, I had the privilege of being raised in a Christian family. And my father was a pastor at one point. Well, the latter part of my life, so to speak. No, most of my life, actually. My father was a pastor. But that does not qualify me. Because every man must stand before the Lord for himself. Every person must stand before the Lord and give an account for themselves. Amen. Everyone must. 
Everyone must give an account for themselves. So I cannot ride on my father's or my mother's relationship with the Lord. God has given me the power to choose. That I'm going to choose Jesus. I'm not going to choose him. And this afternoon, I just want to close off my word, the word that I believe the Lord laid on my heart to share. I said, if there's anyone here this evening who you don't know Christ as your Savior, and you know, like all of us know, the time will come when we'll all die. We'll die at some point. You want to turn your life over to Jesus, just raise your hand. I'm not going to embarrass anyone this evening. I'm not going to ask you to do anything other than raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. If you don't know Jesus and you want to know him as your Savior and your Lord, just raise your hand briefly. I'll see it, I'll see it and I'll remember you in prayer. Yes, I see your hand, sir. Amen. We live in a serious times, and it, I know we all know that. We are here today, and we are gone in the evening or in the night. Yes, yes. Father, we pray that you will look upon us. Father, we are your creation. We are your people. And we all stand in need of your grace. We all stand in need of your help. We all stand in need of your mercy. And I pray, Father God, that you will look right through this congregation, this evening, this audience, and those who raise their hand, you will minister to them. Let the seeds of the word which is sown this evening, bring forth fruit for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Reverend Blackman, for sharing this very powerful word. We now want to pray for the family. These are as he said, these are difficult times. And death is not something that we have ever, will ever become comfortable or accustomed to. It always hurts. It's painful. No matter how strong you are as a Christian, it will always hurt the loss of a loved one. And so we want to pray for the family that God would continue to strengthen you build you up and comfort you. So bow your heads with me. Gracious Father, we approach your sacred throne, acknowledging the clear fact that you are our God. Your word clearly says that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. This evening, Lord, we acknowledge that one more time, a soul has gone to be with you. But we are hurting. We feel the loss. We have emotions. We have feelings. We have pain. But you are the one who can succor our pain. You're the one who can comfort us. You said you will never leave us, nor you will never forsake us. That in those moments of pain and agony that you are our comforter, you are our strong tower. You are our bulwark. You are our hiding place. And because of that, Lord, we come to you knowing without a shadow of a doubt that you will place your arms around the family, Lord, and comfort them in this moment. The children, the grandchildren, the extended family members, Lord, the friends and loved ones who will miss Hazel, the beautiful smile and her warm spirit, her beautiful food and cooking and all the beauty that surrounded her. We have the memory of it. We ask God that you will continue to help us to remain strong in you, knowing that you are with us always, even unto the ends of the earth. And for this we are eternally thankful. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Stand with me as we prepare for the recession.
Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to life, then shall be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, who give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He flayeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly 
displeased. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our departed sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge, to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty work in whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are de delivered from the burden of the flesh, are in joy and felicity, we give thee hearty thanks for the good examples of all those thy servants who, having finished their course in faith, do now rest from their labors. And we beseech thee that we, with all those who are departed in the true faith of thy holy name, may have our perfect consummation and bliss, both in body and soul, in thy eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forevermore. Amen. The first hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. And I bear it no 
of this beautiful song really pens the testimony that we all need to hold dear. It is well with my soul. Can you say that this evening? Can you really say that? My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. The next hymn we have on our hymn sheets is When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. I'll be there. When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the Savior left to gather over on the other shore, when the Lord is called yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there On that bright and cloudy mm -mm -mm. On the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of His resurrection share When His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there Oh, when the roll is called up yonder when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. If we trade him for the master from the dawn till setting sun, let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and no work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the road is called up yonder, oh, it's called up yonder, I'll be there.
that's a beautiful song. And for those of you who don't remember it from your Sunday school days, I want to remind you of it. It's a song we all grew up, those of us of the Sunday school age, who went to Sunday school two and three times a day because you had to go. And for those of you who never went and have not gone, now you've grown up, I want you to hear this song again. Can you just play it again for us? It's a beautiful song. When the roll is called up yonder. Can you do that for me again, brother? Yes, when the roll is called up yonder. If you've never heard it before, learn that song. It's a good Sunday school song. And I like the tempo. Let's get the tempo going. Of the Lord shall song and time shall be no more. When the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved are left to gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder out. Let us sing when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder and be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather for before me on the sky and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be there Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care And when all of life is over and no work on earth is done when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there Oh, praise God. I see my grandmother now looking down and smiling. When the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. This is and should be the desire of all of our hearts that when the roll is called, that we'll be there. There are some songs that have been requested by the family. The song tracks are available. I know that they're going to play some special songs that are chosen by the family for this very special moment.
Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Amén. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days down here through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place Up there For people like you Come a time that our story would end. It 
it's hard to understand But I guess I'll have to try It's not easy To say Goodbye For all the joy we shared All that time we had to spend Now if I had one wish I'd want forever back again To your eyes and hold you when you cry. It's not easy to say goodbye. I can remember all. There were so many memories, some good, some bad. Yes, and through it all, those memories will last forever. There's peace in where you are. Maybe all I need to know And if I listen to my heart I'll hear your laughter once more And so I've got to say I'm just glad you came my way not easy to say goodbye Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall 
in a world where heroes come and go, where God just took the only one I know. So I'll hold you as close as I can, longing for the day when I see your face again but until then God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me and I will hold on tight it's not my place to question only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah 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 Uh, let's keep this family in our prayers, that God will keep his hand upon their lives and strengthen them at this time of loss. I, I knew this family for many years. As a matter of fact, we grew up together in Britain in the, what, 60s. There's about 70s. I've always loved them. And this evening, I really do share their loss. But God is greater than man, and God is able to do all things. May he bless you and keep you and strengthen you. I'll just say, as God said to Moses many years ago, say this prayer over Israel. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all.